very well. It has created the, the innovations, the industrial age, and everything else. Let's not throw away the machine that created the wealth that we are benefiting from. But let's put another machine in action in parallel with it. And it's very simple, actually. You have to imagine this boulder. I lived here for five years. I love the place. And, you know, the Republic of Boulder has always had Republican ideas. So let's imagine the following, that the government says, or you, you vote for uh, uh, the mayor and his team, and you come up with a solution. You want to have certain things done. You want to have a more ecological town. You want to have a town where intergenerational relationships are more active. You want to have a town where elderly people are feeling welcome, and are feeling support, and all these good things. All right. Make a budget in the conventional way, right? You want to pay these people, okay? It's going to cost per household three thousand dollars per year additional taxes. That's the classical way. Solution A. Let's imagine solution B. All right, we say let's call it the Civic, the Boulder Civic. The Boulder Civic is one hour of community service doing one of these things taking care of ecological things, taking care of elderly king problems, taking care of mentoring kids or whatever, all the good stuff that you talk. And the city said, all right, guys, I want you to bring 30 civics at the end of the year per family. Okay? It's not a tax, we call this a contribution. Right? But, but you know, it's something you need to do. Now, let's assume that you guys are all very active in these fields and you you're doing this anyway. I am a busy guy. I don't care about these things. I don't do anything. At the end of the year, I need my 30 civics. Right? Well, we create an eBay, the Boulder Civic eBay. And there's a guy who says, Look, well, you've done 200 of them. I have zero. All right. What do you want? A bicycle? $30 an hour? What is it? That's bargain. Don't make a fixed price. Otherwise, you're going to have technical problems, which I won't get into. But that's floating price. Okay? Otherwise, you're going to have a black market. To be clear. So, what you do is, if the city wants to have a higher price, it's very simple. Instead of asking 30, ask for 50. And the price will go up. Okay? So, here's a mechanism that solves a whole series of problems. And by the way, just for the guys, that, let's assume that there's then someone who says, all that stuff that sounds like socialism, I hate it, I don't want to do anything, no problems, pay the $3,000. Okay? <laughs> Alright? So everybody will be doing what they want. But the city will be better off. And my strong recommendation would be with a system like that, you should ask what the people want to do. Have the non-profit organizations play the same role that businesses do in the conventional economy. They organize the activities of the civic society. And they get paid in civics for the work they do. Right? And all that cost how much to the government? Zero. You've given value to the civic by requiring the contribution. I'm giving you that one example. There are 50 others I could give you. But I don't want to abuse of your patience. Okay? There's also a couple of books I happen to have perpetrated. Uh, well, actually, one came out literally in the Boulder Bookshop yesterday so you have it there okay there it is thank you that's yours thank you all right and there's a second one that's actually coming up this is more a how-to book by the way for those who are interested if you really want a how-to thing that's what the purpose is and the other one is this one which has been 10 years in the making and had been finished yesterday all right so and my co-author there is steven belgian he lives here so he can explain it all better than I can. <laughs> all right? So, any questions? Which one deals with the Terra? The Terra is in this one. Okay? Now, maybe I should explain what the other ones, because not everybody seems to be initiated necessarily. The Terra is one of the currency proposals I've been working on, and whose purpose is to, it's a, a, a global currency. It's the opposite polarity of what we've been talking about. It's a global currency that's nobody's national currency, right?
it's a global currency that is specialized to be a global currency. The unit of account is the order of a million dollars. It's for big businesses. But the purpose for it is that it's a currency that makes it profitable to think long term. That's the objective. That is the one that deals with the environmental problems that I talked about earlier on the mega trends. Currently, the reality is that what's going to happen in our world is not decided by us as consumers, quote unquote, and it's not decided by governments, it's decided by corporations, particularly the big ones. Now, I have no problems with that at the condition that they don't think short term. If you have, ExxonMobil knows more about energy than anybody, I think, even in the scientific circles, but if they optimize the next two or three quarters, I'm rather worried because that's not how we're going to get to a planet that will be viable. If they think for a hundred years, I feel pretty comfortable. So how do you switch that? And that's the therapy. So that example is available in the, in the book. It's a mechanism. I won't go into the details. For those who want to be technical about it, I'm happy to explain more. But that's the purpose. Yes. Yes. Um, do you think it's going to simplify it, or do you think it's going to uh, maybe do some good things, but also add a complexity to it? Okay. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from is from John Kenneth Galbraith, the professor at uh, Harvard. He said, "The monetary domain is the one where complexity is used, not to explain reality, but to hide it." So you think it's complicated. Would you believe it's an accounting system that has been made very complicated in order that nobody can see what's happening? But in fact, it's pretty simple. You know, it's really pretty simple. The civic I explained to you is not complicated, is it? All right. So, and you don't confuse what you're doing with your miles and with your dollars, do you? You know, you're not going to say, I'm going to buy a car with my miles. No. You want to buy an extra vacation with your miles. That may be yes, right? So in other words, you're right that what I'm talking about is that the system needs to has, has gotten a higher level of complexity because of the diversity. But that is what's necessary for the resilience to be there. You will not have the resilience. It's, the monoculture is simple in appearance, okay? But it is not resilient. So that's the key. Is that fair and good answer to your question? Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. You mentioned that everything stops without growth, but isn't there a point where the population grows so much you just can't produce any housing anymore and the growth really slows down almost nothing? Well, well, the thing I was talking about is the growth of monetized activities that cannot be stopped. Because if the money is not created, nobody has the access of the interest. That's the problem. Okay. So I wasn't talking, I mean, yes, actually, my honest solution to the uh, population growth, for example, is increase the standard of living of people and educate the women. We know this, okay? That is, World Bank results have shown this quite extensively, okay? Yes? Yeah, um, whether we're talking about